Let's talk about the Omni Sling and the ratings that it supposedly has. Now this is a really cool adjustable sling that you can use as anchor material. It has uh, the eyes are woven together instead of stitched together like a typical daisy chain. However, they're rating these things at 5,000 pounds eye to eye or 10,000 pounds ultimate strength, which if you wrap the whole thing around a diverter three times, I assume that's what they mean by ultimate strength. Now, Balance Community is a slackline company and they also sell basically what looks to be identical to the RSI Omni Sling, or at least their previous version does that measures a little bit more than six millimeters thick, but now they have a new material and you'll see why in a minute, and that is about half as thick at three millimeters. Now, many of us know that if you have a rope that is rated for whatever, and you tie a knot in it, you will get approximately 50% of the strength. And it is now expected that you're not gonna get the full rope strength because they do test it on a diverter. Now this product is different because you can clip here at this eye or here at this eye, and there's not really a unique way to do it. Like if it's eye to eye strength, I assume they're using a carabiner, not a giant shackle. And I mean, if you're pulling slowly, you should be able to get uh, supposedly 5,000 pounds. I saw on their website that the tensile strength in the slots is 5,000 pounds of force, or the working load limit is 500 pounds vertical, which just means you're pulling straight with a 10 to one safety ratio, which also confirms a 5,000 pound load claim. And this thing is certified up the wazoo. It is uh, ANSI, OSHA, and FPA rated. And uh, you, you gotta pay a lot of money to have your stuff certified. And there's some rigorous testing that has to happen. What I don't understand is the disconnect between um, a simple pull like this in my machine and whatever they're doing mysteriously in these labs. This might be the catalyst for me to learn how standards are. Like I would buy the standards, I would study them, and I have some new machines that I'm trying to install here at the lab to where I can have a lot more control of how I pull things so I can actually shit test the standards and see if we can recreate them before I just randomly pull them here in my machine. So a disclaimer, I don't know the standards and I don't have an idea of what makes my machine so different. And my rate of pull is super close enough, I assume. Um, but when they say 5,000 pounds of eye to eye, I would assume that I'd be able to get that if I just clip two carabiners in here. And that's what we're gonna do here in this video. Now this is a personal anchor and this has two bar tacks for every loop and it's a Dyneema sling by Black Diamond and it's rated for warning, climbing is dangerous. Uh, usually these slings are rated for 22 kilonewtons, but of course how you use this really determines what you're going to get out of it and it's meant for a personal anchor. This is intended to be uh, the anchor. And so I believe when you're dealing with the anchor, it should actually be um, stronger and you really ought to have a number that you can take to the bank or the grave. And sometimes these numbers don't line up. And I really don't know what to think about that. What's interesting is one of the retailers that also sells this, uh, Dynamic Rescue Systems. Now their website says that the webbing used in the Omni Sling has an ultimate tensile strength of 8,000 pounds of force, which is not 10,000. The RSI website says 10,000. They also say the exclusive RSI Omni Sling is comprised of unique webbing which is constructed with two inch long slots separated by one inch of solid webbing. This makes the Omni Sling the only rigging anchor slings that have a separate rigging point every three inches. The rigging slots are actually woven into the original webbing construction, not sewn. Ex exclusive, eh? Uh, this is from Balance Community and it's pretty much the same specs. Looks the same, feels the same. We'll find out if it breaks the same. This was on Balance Community, rated for 33 kilonewtons, and I messaged Jerry Mischewski, who runs Balance Community, and I said, why is it rated for 33? How do they get that number? And I liked the way he responded, because he basically said, yeah, that number is irrelevant for how we're using it. And what's even cooler is he put an entire Slack Science article out where he tested the shit out of this thing and all the different ways that you can use it, in his case, a Slackline rigging. And it doesn't have the same certifications as this thing, but it's the same material. And he has on the internet available for everyone to see all the testing of all the different ways you can use it. Because it's really nice to have the real number that you're gonna get if you're gonna be 
using this stuff, especially when your life depends on it. It's nice to know like the numbers right in the way that you're going to use it. And at the beginning of his Slack Science article, I think it gives a lot of insight on how this is made. In 2014, we released this webbing in a different form. The single line strength of the first version was rated for 44 kilonewtons or 10,000 pounds of force because it's such a thick material. This webbing was a very special item that required a unique type of webbing loom to manufacture. There are only two types of these machines in the US and one of them has been decommissioned from making this specific product. It was literally destroying the machine due to the extreme thickness and dense weave the item had. The second machine is with another company and the manufacturing price is four times as high with its vendor. Due to these circumstances, we had to try and find a new way to make this webbing. Instead of weaving it on a special double head shuttle loom, we switched to a needle loom construction, which is far more efficient, fast, and quite a bit more cost beneficial. However, there's a limitation on how many fiber ends can go on this machine. As such, we had to reduce the single line strength down to 33 kilonewtons, which is still high enough for most of our applications. We were able to achieve a strength on anchor loop that was nearly identical to the first version, which is the most important parts of this webbing. Balance Community has done a lot of work in webbing technology today as slackliners. He's also made quite a few products, which is what I be, I'm always using in the machine to break test stuff. Now, if I wanted to get the absolute strength out of this, I'd wrap this around four times and I'd pull this one on both sides. But uh, right now I'm not gonna do that. That's not what I really wanna focus on. I want to focus on the eye to eye strength. Jerry has already done a lot of these tests and he's got so much data in here that we can build off of it instead of repeating everything. His eye to eye test was 16.38, 16.92, 16.68 kilonewtons, which is pretty much what I got on my single test. What's neat about this anchor sling is you can wrap it around something and you can basically splice it in place. You go back and forth a few times, it'll hold full strength. Kind of like how when you splice Dyneema, it does that. So if you go around two and then three, four, five, six, you can actually get quite a bit of strength. It's awesome to have real information. So when you're actually doing this, you know what you're gonna get. Now, why is it 31 and not 16? Well, you're going around. So you have a loop here now. Now, if you wanna make this a continuous loop, if you use the grog loop specifically, you can actually get almost 55 kilonewtons out of it. Um, there's a lot of cool things you can do with this, but if you're just going to pull eye to eye or let's say I wove this here, but I want to just clip to this because it is full strength. You can clip to that. How strong is that? You can see here that it ripped the fibers apart that it was pulling against. It didn't unweave it. Um, and then this loop here looks undamaged whatsoever. And that loop definitely looks stressed out. I'm not gonna pull on that one again. I'll skip that and I'll pull from here to here. So you can see here how that got pulled apart and how these fibers here got stressed out. So we will skip that again and we'll go to the next one and then we'll pull on these two loops right here. So for funsies, we're not gonna take a carabiner with this size diameter. We're gonna get these larger pins here in order to see if that affects the strength at all. That's a 5.8 shackle and it ripped it out from that side there. 4,964 pounds. It's a lot closer to 5,000 than I thought it would be. Now, you might be saying, well, that's super good enough. Yeah, it is, but they said 5,000. And then when they do Sigma-3 testing, 99.95% chance that it'll never break below that. Um, in this case, it's super good enough for anything you're gonna do with it. Now, I've always found it fun to question labels and it's nice to see what happens when you just clip a carabiner and pull it. And standards are behind a paywall. Unless you are an expert at that stuff, you don't know how they're getting these numbers. And then you go to use it and you're not getting these numbers. For funsies, let's break test uh, balanced communities two more times because I've already done it once on the thicker material and see if we consistently get in the 16 kilonewton range, which would be about four or five kilonewtons lower than the stuff that looks identical. So this is Balanced Communities webbing, and this is RSI. 
You can compare the two and that this is a longer weave right here. It's the only difference I could find because the weave pattern here and here are the same, but where they uh, combine the two layers is different. And I think that's probably why we're getting a strength difference. But let's pull on this a few more times and see what we get. Yeah, it's a little bit stronger this time. Now it could be stronger because I'm using 5 8 inch pins. Now I can use a carabiner and see if it makes any difference. And it kind of rips apart the actual fibers. Let's see how that longer stitch looks after it's been broken. It keeps breaking the same way each time. Just that little bit of a weave pattern was almost a thousand pounds of force difference. And so they did actually get a lot closer. I was, I'm way, way more impressed than, uh, than I thought I was going to be, but it still wasn't 5,000 pounds. And I'm quite not sure what to think about stuff like that other than to start the conversation here on the channel. Now of the RSI Omni Sling types, I have two more three foot sections. And I'm going to stop here and wait for your guys' feedback before I destroy these to see what else you think I should do with kind of some short pieces. I can't actually use the diverter. It takes, um, takes like six feet to actually properly wrap four times around on each side and have anything in between. So I can't test that with this and Jerry already tested uh, significantly with that. And that's really not how we're using it anyway. So I'm not really trying to chase that rabbit. I could chase different weaves if you want, but by the time I'm done weaving this back and forth through itself, it doesn't leave much for this side other than just an eye. Um, I actually don't know what to do with a three foot piece other than wrap around a pipe and just clip uh, what carabiner through these two components right here and call that an anchor. And technically you can do that and it's rated for that. But um, that's all you're going to be able to do with a three foot piece. If you want to see me do that, I will add that to the clips channel and I will pin that as the top comment of this video. If you guys request it, the clips channel is still pretty new. I think currently I still only have about 1500 subscribers. I would love to get some more on there. I'm actually trying not to get too many, so I'm not going to bring it up all the time because it's just me posting some quickies and I'll break maybe up to six things. I never allow more than 15 minutes for the edits for those. It's my way of sustainably just getting information out to you guys and being able to reference things, run things by you before I make main videos. In this case, it's the opposite. We started the conversation here and I will finish it on the clips channel. I'm not going to make another main video about this. When people send me stuff, I can break things no matter what they are and post it on the internet because I have a sub channel in order to do that. If it's just a real quickie single test, you'll see that on Instagram and YouTube shorts and all of it ends up on the website. Now, even though the balance community stuff technically broke lower when you compare it to this, it's still super good enough. And I do really value the information he put out on the internet about this. So uh, if you wanna go support what he's doing and you buy products from him, I have some links in the description below. And I will of course put where I found all this information.